This story is brought to you by Captivating History. Cambodia is a country forged on history and heritage, marked by periods of peace and great tragedies. From the early cities to the adoption of Buddhism and Hinduism, the great kingdom of Angkor, the French colonial era, to the gruesome rule of the Khmer Rouge, the country has been through some rough times. Archaeological discovery from a cave in northwestern Cambodia suggests people using stone tools lived in the caves as far back as 4000 BC and that Cambodians have grown rice well before the 1st century AD. Although little is known of their language and way of life, the first Cambodians likely migrated from the north and arrived before the 1st century AD. In the early 1st century, traveling Chinese traders started reporting about inland and coastal kingdoms in Cambodia. These kingdoms had much of their way of life rooted in the Indian culture. Their arts, alphabets, religions, Buddhism and Hinduism, architectural styles, and the graded class system were all reminiscent of the Indians. Even the local beliefs that emphasize the significance of traditional spirits coexist alongside Buddhism and Hinduism to this day. Cambodia, a country in mainland Southwest Asia, has its modern-day cultural roots in the 1st to 6th centuries in a state known as Funan, which is the oldest Indianized state in the region. Located at the center of the Lower Mekong, Funan, which also means mountain, is the oldest regional Hindu culture, suggesting prolonged interactions with maritime traders from the Indosphere in the West. From this period, the Cambodian language evolved as part of the Mon Khmer family with some Sanskrit elements, the two main religions of Buddhism and Hinduism. The Cambodians can be identified by their style of dressing, which includes checkered scarves known as kramas instead of straw hats. Funan eventually gave way to the Angkor Empire and the rise to power of King Jayavarman II in 802. This was followed by 600 years of political and powerful dominance by the Khmer kings of present-day Southeast Asia, covering the borders of Myanmar East to the South China Sea and north to Laos. These Khmer kings were also famous for building the Angkor Temple Complex, the most extensive concentration of religious temples in the world. Angkor's kings like Jayavarman II, Indravarman I, Suryavarman II, and Jayavarman VII achieved great things during their administrations. For example, in agriculture, they created sophisticated irrigation systems. Their engineering produced massive artificial lakes, along with canals that ensured the farming of three rice crops annually. Other developments were in the areas of architectural developments, urban planning, and logistics. These developments, some of which are still in use today, are the testimony of a creative and progressive civilization of Southern Asian culture. The Angkor Era The giant card face on the Bayan Temple of the Angkor Tom Complex in northwest Cambodia symbolizes the Buddha and King Jaravarman VII, who ruled from 1130 to 1219. Even though it's a Buddhist temple, the Angkor Tom was designed after the great Hindu temple complex of Angkor Wat. Earlier in the 9th century, a Khmer prince returned to Cambodia from abroad, where he was said to have been held captive by kings who proclaimed control over parts of the Southeast Asian mainland. After a chain of ordinations at different locations, the prince proclaimed himself king of a new kingdom that unified several local domains. His kingdom would later be located near modern-day Simrab in northwestern Cambodia. The prince is known as Jayavarman II, who led a religious sect that worshipped the Hindu god Shiva as a Devarajan, meaning god-king. The sect legalized the king's rule by associating him with Shiva. Their existence continued in Cambodian court for over two centuries. The 9th century to 15th century produced more than 26 kings who ruled Cambodia's capital city, the Khmer Kingdom. The kings after Jayavarman II constructed great religious temples for which Angkor is known today. More than a thousand temples and stone inscriptions exist from those ages, most of which are on walls. Noteworthy among the Khmer kings who built massive infrastructures was Suyavarman II, who built the temple known as Angkor Wat in the mid-12th century. Next was Jayavarman VII, who built the Bayan Temple in Angkor Thom, among other massive Buddhist temples 50 years later. Finally, Jayavarman VII was a staunch Buddhist who built hospitals and inns along the roads traversing the kingdom. However, most of these kings seemed more concerned with building towers, especially temples, instead of focusing on their subjects' needs. The 12th century saw the Khmer Kingdom at its peak. It comprises present-day Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, 
the Malay Peninsula, and Myanmar, formerly Burma. Khmer ruins can still be found in Laos and Thailand, along with inscriptions from centuries ago. The Angkor monarchs received tributes from smaller principalities to the north, east, and west, and they did business with China. The capital was the center of a network of canals and reservoirs that supplied farmlands. It led to abundant harvests, which made it possible to support the exploding population, predominantly farmers, temple builders, and warriors who fought many wars. However, the Khmer Kingdom suffered from continuous internal rebellion and foreign invasions because many kings gained control by defeating their predecessors. Several factors have been attributed to the decline and eventual fall of the Khmer Kingdom in the 13th and 14th centuries, one of which was the rise of powerful Thai empires previously under Angkor. Another reason was the drop in population resulting from continuous wars within the kingdoms. In addition, some attributed the fall of the Angkor Empire to the introduction of Theravada Buddhism, a practice that teaches achievement of enlightenment through righteous acts and meditations. These equality ideas challenged the graded and monarchical Cambodian society, especially the authorities of the Hindu families. Climate change also brought extended drought to the region. Additionally, an explosion in maritime activities removed the stronghold of Angkor on the kingdoms. After the invasion by the Thais, the Cambodian upper class moved to the southeastern area of Phnom Penh. Cambodia went through dark ages between the 15th and 19th century. It was a period of deterioration and loss of territories. There was a brief respite in the 16th century because the kings who built the capitals in the southeast region of Tonle Sap along the Mekong River transacted business with other parts of Asia. However, Cambodia experienced an adverse turn in fortune due to the Siamese overthrow of the new capital at Long Vec in 1594. From then on, the country became a puppet between two powerful neighbors, Siam and Vietnam. In the 17th century, Vietnam's settlement of the Mekong Delta led to the occupation of the area. Cambodia lost some of its wealthiest territories and was eventually cut off from the sea. This type of foreign incursion continued through the first part of the 19th century because Vietnam wanted to absorb Khmer lands and enforce its system of government and culture on the inhabitants. By the latter half of the 19th century, France began expanding its colonial system of government into the peninsula between India and China. Finally, in 1863, the French accepted the invitation of the weakened Cambodian king to impose a protectorate over the extremely feeble kingdom thus putting an end to the disintegration by Thailand and Vietnam. The French ruled Cambodia through an indirect system of government, leaving much of the country's institutions, including the monarchical system of government, intact. Although the French did little in Cambodia's educational development, they developed the civil service, constructed roads, provided port facilities, and improved public works. Compared to neighboring Vietnam, the French invested little in Cambodia. However, they developed a rubber plantation in eastern Cambodia. In addition, the French colony exported quite a sizable volume of rice. The French also rebuilt the Angkor Temple and decoded the Angkorian inscriptions, which helped the people understand their heritage better. There was little opposition to the French rule because it allowed the monarchy to thrive, along with Buddhism and the rural lifestyle of the people. During World War II, the Japanese forces entered into China but left the compliant French administration and colony intact. However, in 1945, while trying to avoid defeat, the Japanese removed French saboteurs and installed a young independent Cambodian king, Nur Dom Sihanouk. By 1946, and after the departure of the Japanese, the French resumed its indirect system of government but allowed the Cambodians to draft their constitution and form political parties. Later on, war broke out in Indochina. Nationalist groups with communist ideologists struggled to gain independence from the French. Most of the fighting was in Vietnam in the First Indochina War, lasting from 1946 to 1954. Communist guerrilla forces and allied Vietnamese troops gained control over many territories in Cambodia. But in 1953, King Sihanouk negotiated and gained independence from the French without bloodshed. The Geneva Accord of 1954 marked the end of the First Indochina War and recognized King Nur Dom Sihanouk's government as the only legitimate authority in Cambodia. In 1955, King Sihanouk relieved himself of monarchical responsibilities to pursue full-time political ambitions. He picked his father to be king in his place. 
Sihanouk formed the People's Socialist Community, Sankum Ristur Neo, which won all seats in the national election in 1955. The former king served as the Cambodian Prime Minister until 1960, when his father, the king, died and was named the head of state. Sihanouk was popular with the people, but brutal to his opponents. During the Cold War of the 1950s, a period of intense tension between the U.S. and its allies and the former Union of Soviet Socialist Republics USSR, and its partners, the United States, China, and USSR all sought the support of Cambodia. However, Sihanouk played a neutral role, leading to economic expansion for Cambodia from these countries seeking its support. By 1965, Sihanouk broke his relationship with the United States. He allowed the North and South Vietnamese forces fighting the United States to set up bases on Cambodian soil. As the war between the United States and Vietnam intensified, tension increased locally for Sihanouk. The Cambodian Communist Party of Kampuchea CPK, also known as the Workers' Party, took up arms against the ruling government. This civil war led to an unstable economy and the country became even more challenging to run for Sihanouk. In a desperate move, he sought and renewed ties with the U.S. Later, in 1969, U.S. President Richard Nixon ordered the bombing of Cambodia to destroy Vietnamese forces and sanctuaries. While on a trip abroad in March 1970, Sihanouk was removed by the Cambodian National Assembly by pro-Western and anti-Vietnamese conservatives, and General Lan Nol assumed power as the country's leader. The former Prime Minister, Sihanouk, was sentenced to death in absentia while he sought asylum in China. By October 1970, General Lan Nol formed the Khmer Republic. While in exile, Sihanouk formed a government and allied with North Vietnam and CPK, the Khmer Rouge, a French word for Red Khmers. The United States stopped bombing Cambodia in 1973. By that time, General Lan Nol's soldiers were fighting the Vietnamese and Khmer Rouge. The general lost control of most of the Cambodian provinces, which the U.S. bombing had destroyed. The war had left many casualties and damaged infrastructure behind. The cities were flooded with thousands of refugees, and in 1975, despite massive support by the U.S., the Khmer Republic fell, and the Khmer Rouge forces took over Phnom Penh. A few weeks later, the North Vietnamese troops declared victory in South Vietnam. After occupying the Cambodian towns, the Khmer Rouge commander, General Saloth Sar, who goes by the pseudonym Pol Pot, commanded all the city dwellers to move into the countryside and take up farming. The general's regime, went by the name Democratic Kampuche, DK, advocated for total independence from all foreign powers. However, it accepted economic and military support from China and North Korea. The Khmer Rouge, under General Pol Pot's reign, introduced painful and harsh socialist policies. DK was dominated by illiterates who fought for the victory of the party. They restricted freedom of speech, association, movement, and banned all religious practices. They also regulated food and information. The regime was particularly harsh to previous city dwellers. Anyone who opposed the Khmer Rouge regime was killed. They included religious leaders and members, bureaucrats, merchants, and ordinary people. Millions of Cambodians were relocated forcefully, starved, and went to forced labor or torture houses. The Khmer Rouge was responsible for killing nearly 1.7 million Cambodians while in power, about one-fifth of the population at the time. The Khmer Rouge also attacked neighboring countries in an attempt to reclaim lost Cambodian territories. DK haunted, expelled, and massacred ethnic Vietnamese and Chinese minorities. The regime of General Se Lo Sar came to an end in 1979. In October 1991, all the warring factions, including the United Nations and some foreign nations, agreed to end the conflict in Cambodia. The accord gave way to a power-sharing arrangement between the UN Transitional Authority in Cambodia and the Supreme National Council, which comprises numerous Cambodian factions. The president of the SNC was Prince Noor Dom Sihanouk, the former king and prime minister of Cambodia. In 1993, under a new constitution, the monarchy was restored and Cambodian's kingdom was established. Sihanouk was made the king again. After the elections, DK had lost its foreign friends, aid, and a seat on the UN General Assembly. Today, the UN economy depends mainly on foreign aid. The previously enjoyed interest by foreign powers has dissipated, leading to reduced economic support. 
These developments and internal political crises have limited the country's chances of democratization and economic growth. To learn more about the history of Cambodia, check out our book, The History of Cambodia, a captivating guide to Cambodian history, including events such as the rise and decline of the Khmer Empire, Siege of Angkor, Cambodian-Vietnamese War, and Cambodian Civil War. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.